That's us. <laughs> That's us. Right. Here. When? Um, it was one of the musicals. About 10 years ago? No, it wasn't no 10 years ago. <laughs> it was about, about two years ago. Two years ago? Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe I was on vacation. It might be three, but, we, but it's here. It's us. We had a musical here. How's everybody uh, again uh, before we go ahead and start? Uh, welcome, welcome everybody uh, that's on. Good morning, good morning everyone. Uh, welcome everybody that's that's here, and then also that's that's uh, on <clears throat> on the web right now, on either our YouTube channel or the um, Antioch Missionary Baptist Church um, Facebook channel. And again, welcome, welcome everybody. Um, today we are truly blessed to. Um, to be here uh, just one more day. As I always say, truly blessed to be here just one more day, one more day. Uh, because we don't know the hour <laughs> or the minute or uh, the second that we want to be snatched out of here. But uh, I am thankful uh, for the Lord, the Lord's blessing for us to be here and uh, for us to um, at least share this another opportunity for us to uh, be together again. Uh, you want to go ahead and pray us in? Anybody, anybody want to pray us in? Holy Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our health and strength. We thank you for your love and mercy. We just ask you to continue to bless and keep us. In your son Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. All right, so um, what we were discussing um, last week, uh, we started with the week before as well, deliverance, conquest, wisdom, and courage. And um, one of the First question, just to go back and refresh a little bit, um, what is deliverance? Um, and then we, we also talked about that it is a action of being rescued and free, set free uh, from something. Um, and we talked about free from bondage. So that's just, we just throw them going back up to the top and then we're coming back down. Um, so <clears throat> release, escape, and then relief. Again, um, relief is again being free, set free from grief and anger. Uh, we did go over uh, what are some ways God speaks to us today. Uh, we did it uh, through the Word, which is out of the Bible. Through the inner uh, still, a small voice. Uh, we went over that too. Talked about a couple of Bible verses in that. Through the advice of counsel. Through the audible voice of God. Through dreams. Through visions. Through angels. Through circumstances and the inner conviction, conviction of peace. And um, so we ended last week on uh, the audible voice, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, pick back up where it says uh, through, through dreams, through dreams. God talks to us through dreams. Matthew 1 and 20 and 21, uh, it says, there are many instances in the Bible where, where God clearly communicates through dreams. But after, and I'm reading 21 as well, but after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared into him and in a dream and said, to, said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So we all have dreams. We, we uh, talked about that last week. A lot of, uh, some people said, uh, or someone said, I think it was Freddie. It might be Freddie or his sister, one of them. Has said that they, you know, you had dreams, and and we say dreams do come true, right? <laughs> you dream something, and sometimes dreams come come true. The reality is that it's a dream. Um, and then she did give birth to a son, and and of course, who was it? The name, uh, who was the name? Jesus. 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 All right. All right. So again, and then now we're going to pick up and go to Peter's visions. Visions. Can I ask you something? Yes, sir. Since you're getting on the dream thing, <laughs> if Jesus called his mother that woman, he never addressed her as mother. Mother. Mm -hmm. He acknowledged that she is his mother, but as you, for the first time when she told him to do something that was against his direction from his heavenly father, mm -hmm. he said, woman, I'm not ready right. to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, yeah, so he addressed her as woman all the time. Mm -hmm. And 
he addressed his brothers as brothers, biological and spiritual brothers. Mm -hmm. what did he, how did he address his earthly adopted father, Joseph? Actually, he called him Joseph because when I read it. You, is that what you think mm -hmm. he did? Mm -hmm. You know, because since J Joseph was the first adopted father, then earthly adopted father. Right. So you say he called him He called him, him Joseph. Joseph. Yeah, we couldn't find it. I'll find it for you. I'm not sure if he, he called He did call him Joseph, though. He didn't call him Father. I uh, thought maybe he might call him man. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah, he called him Joseph. He called him Joseph. It, it's in here. Um, but we, we can go back to it. And um, I look it up once somebody oh, starts. Oh, yeah, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so um, <clears throat> now we're again going to visions. How the Lord speaks to us in visions uh, in the world today. You know, we're so caught up in seeing as believing, right? We see, we have to see it and we believe it, right? Um, but what happens when we see stuff before it happens? Has that happened to you guys? Have y'all had something happen that y'all saw and then it happened? No, I didn't. Okay, so. Some people do say they have uh, precon pre pre <laughs> preconnections, preconnections, sorry. Um, and uh, we know, uh, as they call, what do you call them, mediums? Some, I think they call them mediums or whatever. Fortune tellers and all that other stuff. Uh, they always say they see stuff and can tell you what's going on and everybody spends, us, you know, $100 or, well, they can say they going, you can, they're gonna charge 99 cents, but you end up, I mean, here, <laughs> I heard that before. I forgot her name, the lady who, it was a uh, African lady who, who was making a lot of money. But they said they start off by, you you, you can call and they'll tell you your fortune and, and it's 99 cents, but it end up being, end up being a hundred dollars. <laughs> Which is crazy. <laughs> tell you it's 99 cents, they tell you what's going on in your life. But um, again, uh, Acquiring knowledge, um, seeing the future, uh, future visions, future sights, um, psychics. <laughs> That's what psychics. I know there's something coming to my head. Psychics. Yeah, they try to be, you know, try to get you, try to tell you what your future is going to hold, and can tell you how long you're going to live, and how many kids you're going to have. Uh, but do the Bible talk about psychics? Is it? Does it talk about the psychics in the Bible? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one thing, uh, excuse me, I didn't cut you off. Oh, you're good. But it, it was uh, something that just came to me. Uh, I remember one time I was supposed to go and uh, to a party that was being held because we had played baseball. And my mother said, no, I've got a funny feeling, so you can't go. Uh-huh. But we all, we've all been there and said, or even heard somebody say that same thing, where they said, uh, I got a funny feeling. I, fu I got a funny feeling you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't go there. How many times have you had that funny feeling come to when you was in, a, <laughs> in the military? <laughs> and, and you knew they were going to get, you know, they was, somebody was going to get in trouble. <laughs> we knew somebody was going to get in trouble. We said, man, I don't know. I'm, I don't know about doing I don't know if I'm going to do this today. <laughs> And what happens, they end, up, they end up getting caught out there at the club, and they know they're supposed to be there at, at the club, and, uh, uh, <laughs> and then the outcome is bad, right? Yeah. Well, it has happened, though, it hasn't it? Hasn't it? You know? But again, we, um, in, in Isaiah, Isaiah, 
um, 41, in Isaiah 41, it talks about how um, they used to look at, it was so many gods around, as they called it in those days, and, uh, and the Lord challenged one, so many, you know, Babylonians, you know, he, he challenged them. And uh, he told them, you know, and, and uh, he said, and <laughs> tell us your items. <laughs> what is going to happen? You know, what's going to happen? Tell us what, what, tell us what the former things are so that we, we can may consider them and know their, their final outcome. Um, and that's out of verse uh, 21 to 24. So that's uh, out of Isaiah 41 and 41 and 20. 21 and 24, through 24. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's kind of funny, though, that we see things today, and people say, I got all these gods, this different God and this different God. And uh, it, it, it says, as Israel was surrounded by many visions, I mean, many nations, whose God supposedly had special power. You know, everybody has special power, um, such as helping, helping everybody grow their crop, <laughs> um, and then telling everybody who's going to win in war. But these guys, however, failed. They failed. And, and, and like I said, in Isaiah 41 is where they were talking about how, <coughs> how the Lord challenged them, <coughs> saying, if your God is going to do this, if your God is going to do that, um, let, it, let, it, let it happen. Let's see, let's see if it's going to happen. And it didn't. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff uh, happened to them back in Israel with the Babylonians uh, trying to uh, not believe in our God. You know, my point is that we ha we have to honor and trust our God. They trusted their God and they failed. <laughs> they failed historically. Uh, again, when it comes to their mediums or their psychics and, or their gods, it didn't work. We only sh only should be sharing. I mean, sharing the feelings of having one God. It's one God, uh, and th and that's it. Um, God delivers for us. He, de he delivers for me. What about y'all? Does he deliver for you too? He delivered me. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we have we have seen some serious uh, consequences that happens when you don't trust God. So again, going back to what we were talking about, this visions. Um, Peter's Peter had a vision in Acts ten. You can go to Acts ten if you open your Bible to Acts ten, uh, verse nine through eighteen. We we'll go over over. <coughs> A little bit. So that's Acts 10. Acts 10. 9 through 18. And we're talking about Peter's vision. <coughs> Is it red? Okay, okay. It's dead then. <coughs> you want to read 9 through 10? Acts chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. And he saw heaven open up and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. So just imagine that just if you put yourself in Peter's eyes, you know how many times I used to wait and sat down on your little your little resting place, and just had your thoughts. You know, you know it's just Peter was, you know, he was doing the same thing. Um, and just like we do, we, we get in our trances as well when we sit there just thinking about um, thinking about something. And he was thinking. He, he saw heaven open up, <coughs> like a large sheet being let down. And you, you know, your imagination imagination can come, you know, can be free. <laughs> at times when you're when you're sitting there thinking and just pondering and this is like we being ponderous he's he was in a trance and it came it contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds and a voice told him get up Peter kill and eat surely not Lord Peter replied I've never eaten anything impure or unclean and then the voice spoke to him the second time do not call anything impure that God has made clean. <laughs> this happens three times, and immediately the sheep was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, men sent by Cornelius found out what Simon's house was and started.
stop at the gate. They called out and asked him if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. So, again, this is Peter's vision, and we were talking about how visions are, you know, dreams, visions, they're real. You know, and again, this is an example in the Bible where it was talking about Peter's vision. So he did, he talks to us through visions. Talks to us through visions. <clears throat> Our next one is through angels. He talks to us through angels. Do we believe that? Have God. I, nobody's going to say they saw angels. I'm not asking that. <laughs> I'm just saying in general. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Um, but he talks to us through angels. And we know this uh, because of, when Luke it talked about how the birth of Jesus was foretold, right? In the, in the book of Luke, Luke uh, chapter 1, uh, verses 26 through 38. So Luke 1, Luke chapter 1, 26 to 38. Luke 1, 26 to 38, if you want to turn to your Bible or, or if you want to uh, look it up on your phone or whatsoever. But he talks to us through all these things. And, you know, we have to learn to listen. But he talks to us through angels. And, and, and it says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, Gabriel and Nazareth, to the town of Galilee, Galilee, to a virgin pledge to be married to a man named Joseph, a descent of David. The virgin's name was Mary. 28, 29, the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. So, so again, this is, <laughs> this is the angels. These are angels. Angel Gabriel and Nazareth that went down. That's, that's, I mean, you can't even fathom it. You know, I, I don't know if I, I could fathom if an angel came down and talked to me. He told me to do something, but he, he, he again, this is an example how he talks through things and people. And this is through angel. When he, again, God sent angels down. Now, what happens if an angel comes to see you? Are you running? <laughs> you know, are you running? Because it ain't nothing that we ain't never seen before, right? Yep, I haven't seen one. <laughs> but, but if you see one, you run. I'm, I'm pretty sure y'all gonna turn your back and run because I would probably run. I'm not gonna tell you no lie. I probably would. I probably would. <laughs> uh, but the angel went to her and said, "Greetings. You are highly favored." In verse thirty, it says, "But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor in God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus." How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, and the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. And no word from God will ever fail. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have to, again, we have to learn to trust. Trust. Go ahead and read, read it, read the rest of that, and then uh, pick up the circumstance. I got to fix one of these. I'm the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. And then so he talks to us through what? He can talk to us. I'm trying to fix the other thing. He talks to us through circumstances. However, there's a, there's a danger of opening the door to Satan by letting their circumstances dictate our lives. So be wise and discerning with regard to your circumstances and expect God to speak to you through them. So circumstances. What kind of circumstances are we talking about? 
What circumstance? What kind of circumstances do you think we're talking about? But however, in the danger of opening doors to Satan by letting mere circumstances dictate our lives. So what do you think they're talking about? Anybody, what do you think he's talking about when he says circumstances? It's a result of something. Something happens as a result of something. And it changes your life. Uh, what's, what's something happened in your life as a circumstance that changed your life? Anybody? Nobody can think of certain. It, well, let me see. Uh, 2018, I had a stroke. <laughs> and that circumstance ran real deep in me. Yeah. So I had so, so I had to make changes in my life. Drastic changes. Uh, I mean drastic changes. Um, because I didn't want to have to deal with stress. So that was a circumstance that happened in 2018 for me. What changed my forethought, my mind on a lot of things. Uh, a lot of things. So that's, that's, those are through circumstances. That's what I'm talking about. So it had to be some uh, circumstances that changed my, my views on how I, be, how I should be living, right? Right? So, uh, and that, that uh, came, taking an aspirin one time a day, every day. One aspirin a day. It was a circumstance. Right. Circumstance changed, changed something in me, so I had to change and adjust. So anybody have, have another circumstance? That's what, just to let everybody know what I was talking about. Well, when I was diagnosed as being a diabetic, that changed the way I ate. And that was sort of a big deal. So I enjoyed eating everything mm -hmm. as much as I wanted. Mm -hmm. But that meant I had to cut down on some things and some things just not eat at all. Right. Right. But that family. was a change uh, for self-preservation to overcome fear. For which one? Which, if we read, if you read and believe the Bible, Jesus came his second time. He said, "I come to tell you that at my Father's house there are many mansions." Mm -hmm. And he said, if it wasn't true, I wouldn't tell you. Right. Okay. But in the meantime, he had already preached the gospel, and then he sent and trained other disciples, starting with the original John and Matthew and them guys, but then it was uh, those, uh, uh, but then there were some other ones that also learned from them, mm -hmm. such as Joseph and uh, Isaiah, uh, Barnabas was another. They all learned different things. And, and, and we believe that there is something better that Jesus has set up for us. But if we know that this is better, we believe the word, why do we want to linger here so much? Mm -hmm. I'm not stating a fact, I'm asking a question. If people believe with their heart and soul, and we trust Jesus as our Lord and Savior, right? Right. He gives us all, because uh, his father gave him all of his kingdom. And say, now, come believe in me. Mm -hmm. In other words, he's saying, trust me. Trust me, right. So we trust him. Mm -hmm. true, a true Christian. Mm -hmm. Trust Jesus, the right. word. Right. Even though Jesus might not deliver the word directly to mm -hmm. us as an individual, mm -hmm. but that's, he couldn't be everywhere. It's, it's like being in the military, I use this. Mm -hmm. The commanding officer, no matter what his rank is, he can't do everything. Everything, right. So he has an agency. The agency can't do everything, so he has First sergeant, first kid. Mm -hmm. He can't do everything either. Right. <laughs> so he has some assistants. Mm -hmm. They start off with a buck or, or staff or whatever you want to call them, right on down into 
Joe Blow is a private guy. He don't have nowhere else to <laughs> kick it off to, you know. Now, but what happened in leadership, all good leaders, before they can be a leader, they must be a good, a good follower. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. But the way, even in the biblical days, the king, King Saul, and all the rest of them, what they did, they surrounded themselves with what we would call in these modern times, brown noses or butt kisses. Mm -hmm. This was to agree with everything they say. Don't disagree with me. No, no, you're not allowed to disagree with me. A lot of political and spiritual leaders today have this same attitude. Mm -hmm. My way is the only way you either in or you out. Mm -hmm. And then people sit and listen and the so-called leader assume that they are agreeing with <laughs> Right. <laughs> And even in our churches today, we have people that's just holding their hand up and shaking their head as if they are, they don't even know what they are agreeing with. <laughs> a second ago, you was talking, I'm not going to talk for us tonight, but a second ago, you were talking about these people, <coughs> you could make this telephone call and so the psychic, yeah, the psychic people. You from Katie or something? Yeah, yeah, that's the that's lady I'm talking about. Fifteen dollars. Fourteen dollars. He could tell you like this. <laughs> yeah. It was ninety nine cents. Bar one chance. It was ninety nine cents first. <laughs> yeah, we start off ninety nine cents. <laughs> but anyway, I was in a bar one time, and and there were three ladies sitting at the bar, and two of them were looking pretty swifty. You know, I mean physically, and. I'm on the other end of the bar with another guy and now we were listening to these three women talk and they were talking about how good I, I almost called this procrastinator name uh, but I can say she is from here one of these women said you know I don't know what I'm going to do I'll call her and ask her my telephone bill is five hundred ninety dollars <laughs> the other one said well man you got, I, I, you got me out Almost a thousand dollar telephone bill. It started off at 75 cents a night. <laughs> then you. <laughs> she made a lot of money, though, just to let you know. She did make a lot of Somebody money. Somebody made a lot of money, didn't they? Yeah, she made a lot of money. And that's how false prophets that we would war mm -hmm. warn. Be aware of these false prophets and teachers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my son did at one time call the uh, psychic hotline or yeah. something like that. Mm -hmm. It was what ninety nine dollars, but it was what uh, so many minutes. Yeah, and you go over them minutes and you get my phone bill was six hundred and some dollars. <laughs> yeah, everybody they are talking about how we were talking about earlier how uh, psychics. Um, <laughs> don't take your money. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we was talking. Uh, <clears throat> so let's let's go back to circumstances uh, to finish off. Because uh, this is our last. We get on to our last part of this. Um, but through circumstances, God do speak through us through circumstances. Um, also through the inner conviction and peace. It is similar to the inner steel. That small voice is it's, it's it's similar to it. But God can give you uh, deep convictions and inner peace about something. Um, again, inner peace. Um, <clears throat> why, why being sensitive to the Holy Spirit is vital to your everyday life? Why do you think being sensitive to the Holy Spirit is vital to your everyday life? Does anybody? What was the question? Why being sensitive to the Holy Spirit is vital to your everyday life? Being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> why do you think that's, that's important? So he, he has left the Holy Spirit here to help us through, if, if we would listen, if we listen. <laughs> yeah. to yeah. what's being said to us. Mm -hmm. So our relationship with God is vital. Yeah. Right, but I think that 
that since we are Christian, a person that a a, a, a repenter, a, a, a person that accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and believes this, you make a psychological uh, com, uh, uh, covenant with Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. So if if you believe in him and that and he sent a message just like that commanding officer, he can't be in everywhere. He had a lot of personality appeals. So he used his spirit just like he did with Mary, mm -hmm. with Gabriel. He mm -hmm. sent the angel to us and fear not. Mm -hmm. you know? And all through the Bible you can get that that and but he made no hasty decisions. sensitive again we have to have a, a, a good relationship with uh with the lord uh you have to you know you have to um and we also have to have a real good relationship with him because we want to go to heaven <laughs> as well so we got to know our father we got to trust our father we got to believe um acts one let's go to acts one and eight acts chapter one verse eight shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might, and the Holy Spirit has come upon you. There are those right there, you know, you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. There are those, however, who are unsatisfied with the carnal life, <laughs> in the carnal life, in their carnal mind, uh, so they reach out for something more. They want to be sensitive and useful to the Holy Spirit. I want to become a vessel, you know? Let me become a vessel of the Holy Spirit. Let me become a vessel. So I'll be able to sacrifice for, for, for our Father, you know? Let us, let me be a vessel. You're a vessel. James, you're a vessel. You know, everybody's a vessel towards something. You know, 2 Timothy, you don't have to turn here, but 2 Timothy 2, you can write it down. Though. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and 21, it says, those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be, a, will be instrumental for a special purpose, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. That's 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 2 and verse 21. It's, it says it right there. When your, your heart is cleansed, you know, I want a clean heart. <laughs> I want a clean heart. You know, we, we, we have to be more cooperative with, with the Holy Spirit is, is what I'm really trying to say. We need to be 
or proper. Listen, trust him, and believe him. We have to, you know, don't worry about the, all the distractions, because Satan's going to send distractions to us. We're going to get distracted. We're going to fall sometimes, but we got to get back up praising God. We got to get back up praising God. You know, that's the only way. Y'all have to stay down in the dumps. And we talked about the pit about a whole month last right. time, last month. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to stay in the pit. <laughs> you do not have to stay in the pit. You know, Satan is going to send distractions to you when you're trying to get your life right and, and trying to believe and trust and trying to walk, you know, you know, the walk of faith. And, you know, but that's what Satan is in. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> We got to just think of the Holy Spirit instead. When we go through those distractions, when things happen, walk through it. Trust God. Believe it. Mean it. You know, just, just we have to we have to learn to trust Him. In Ephesians 4, 23 and 24 almost says the same thing. We have to have a new attitude. <laughs> Verse 23 said, we have to have a new attitude. <laughs> a new attitude. Of our mind. I have zeal now. And it's like that. You, I've been away from God for a long time. And then God has told me to come back home. And they come home. <laughs> mm -hmm. They come home. And, and again, the biggest thing is having an attitude change. Your mind has to change dramatically. All the stuff you used to do in the past, it's gone. You should let it go. All the anger you have for somebody, you should let it go. All the pain that you had, you have to let it regress and go. That's some of the things that we're having a new attitude because we're trusting and having a good relationship with our Holy Spirit. You know, in verse 24 of that, in verse 24, Ephesians chapter 4, it says, it says, and to put on what? A new self. A new self. Put on a new self. You got a new attitude. A new self. New self. Created. What? In the image of God. <laughs> created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. You know, that's, that's you know, we want, uh, that's what we want to strive for. To be like him. To be of him. A vessel. With a new mind and new attitude. I got a new attitude. You know that song. Stop, Freddie. Tell them how old you are. <laughs> <laughs> He's singing a song with me. I, man, he sing. <laughs> I got a new attitude. <laughs> but you know what I mean. You, you have to have a new mind. You have to, new, you know, you as a result, you want to be a new self. Uh, you know, Romans eight and eight and five. Those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what flesh desires. Right? <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth. Those who live according to your flesh have your mindset already. <laughs> this is the way I want to live. These fleshly desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have mindset on what the Spirit what desires. So it's a mindset. My mindset has to change. Just, just think about that. Just think about verse five, uh, verse 5 again. Those who live according to the flesh 
have their mindset on the fleshly desires. That's, that's true in everything that we see out here because everybody's living, you know, just, just look at all the guys who, you know, again, we have all of these senseless killings. Somebody's trying to perpetrate who they really aren't. They're not ready for that life. Yeah. But <clears throat> they're living out in flesh and they say, I don't have nothing else to go, go by. You know, I don't have nothing else to go to. I might as well go on and do this and, and make money. It's the only way I'm gonna make money. I can't get a job. You can get a job. You can get a job. You can change your lifestyle. Your lifestyle doesn't have to be from being in the streets. You can come from the streets, but that don't mean you have to live in the streets. We all came from the streets. We all, what, no, nobody was brought up rich. You know? If we were, we probably wouldn't be living here. <laughs> but your mindset has to change. Your spirit has to change. You know, Romans 8, Romans 8, 9, let's go to 9. 9 says, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but the realm of the Holy Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they don't belong to Christ. That was verse 9 in Romans. Romans 8 and 9. But it, it tells you you have to live a certain way. A righteous way. You have to live a different way. You have to. You can't stay where you used to. Our mindset has to change. That's having a, a deep relationship with your Holy Spirit is inside you. Because God has already granted you that. Your desires should be of him. So we talked about how God talks to us through our dreams. He talked he talk to us through our inner peace, our, our circumstances. And we're seeing how we have to be sensitive to our Holy Spirit. We have to be sensitive to our Holy Spirit. <laughs> we have to, again, have a different mindset. I have to have a different mindset. I, I got to think differently. That's Corinthians 2 and 16 says, Therefore, brethren, be ye You know, we're going to um, go ahead. And we're gonna, no, we're not going to close down. We're going to go a couple more. Um, the next one what we're talking about right now is why is listening to God essential in our everyday walk? Why, why is it essential? Because we, we need to walk with him. We need to obey what he says. We have a walk with him. So he has to guide us. He's a shepherd. He's a great shepherd. He's a great shepherd. Mm -hmm. That's why I told him. God means that, I mean, he says exactly what he's going to do because he promised. You know, try having a true conversation with God. <laughs> try having a, a true conversation with God and see how you feel. See if you feel better. Talk to God like you talk to us, like we're talking to you. <clears throat> it happens, it works. <laughs> I promise you, you feel better. You're down and out. Talk to God. Talk to him. He's your heavenly father. The same way you called your mother, your father, your grandmother. I talk to my grandmother almost on a daily basis. If it's not, we're communicating somewhere. If it's on Facebook, and yes, yeah, she is 88 years old on Facebook. And believe, I'm like, granny, you know. <laughs> I know she asked me to be her friend one time. I was like, no, I'm not accepting her as my friend. <laughs> and my sister had to talk me into it. My aunt had to talk me into it. She was like, I, I don't know if I'm going to accept my grandmother. Uh, uh, 
mommy is uh, my friend on Facebook. I'm like, Granny, she's all over Facebook, heart and everything. And it's like, okay, Granny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. I got to give it to her. She's 88 and living life to the fullest. Um, thank God for her. Um, <clears throat> but again, listening to God is very essential in our daily, daily walk. We have to try talking to him sometimes, you know, when you're, when, when we're down. Uh, I guarantee you, you get back up. It, it, just like you said earlier, it, don't ha it might not happen like that, but it'll happen. It'll happen. Uh, and we got to listen. Yeah. You know, you, know, you, 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 first, you, you said talk like we talk to each other. Now, sometimes we cut each other off, but we, you know, we can't be cutting God. Yeah. We got to let him <laughs> sit there and listen to what he's saying. Right. And, Soak it in. Right. Right. <laughs> Say the aim is three and three. Them two men be agreed acting in the law together. Mm -hmm. So we, we got to agree with him and, and, and we got to agree with what he's saying and we walk with him. Mm -hmm. We got our family father. Mm -hmm. Got to kill him. Great kill him. Yeah. Have our faith. Yeah. And you're exactly right, uh, Freddie. We, we have to learn to listen. And we need to stop and listen. We need to stop. Stop and listen to what God is telling us. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I can't. I can't uh, ask for a better father to listen to. Right. Uh, I can't. Uh, I'm in a car driving. I'm talking, talking to him. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, so sitting at home, talking to him. You know, you got to have a personal relationship with God, and you have to keep it. Uh, that's the only way you're gonna get by. You have to have a personal relationship uh, with him. Uh, we're going to end that in today um, on a good note, like we always always do. I am uh, the kids asked me about Sunday school last week, and uh, I can't turn them down. <laughs> I can't push them off. So um, we will start Sunday school uh, within the next week or two. Uh, I get with Pastor Tyler, but uh, it's going to be my commitment to make sure if a kid comes to talk to me and say they want to do Sunday school. Uh, I have no choice but to do that yeah. uh, because it's a kid asking. You know, they they they, they want to learn. They want they want to hear. Uh, they miss Sunday school. Uh, what I am going to do though is, is to make sure everybody um, wear their mask. Uh, make sure they have their mask on. So that's the only thing I, I'm going to ask uh, that they wear their mask uh, while we're in Sunday school. Uh, it's not. It's not. Uh, and I'm just saying that in general, generally, because we're going to be downstairs and everybody's going to be running around and uh, those things. So I'm just going to ask um, if, if the kids just be allowed to wear their mask uh, during Sunday school. But we're going to start uh, again. And I have kids here now. Uh, some grandkids are here. The grandkids are here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to we're going to um, we're going to go on and pick it up. Uh, Sunday school uh, for the kids because it is again it's a great thing when they come and ask you know when we're gonna start Sunday school yeah. you know so I'm, I'm not gonna turn that down and I'm not gonna push it off uh, any longer so next week next week next week next week uh, it's my commitment to make sure uh, everybody knows that we're gonna we're gonna do Sunday school uh, for the kids next next week um, and then I'll get with Pastor Tyler and, and Tony and them and we just class, they do class and I'll be downstairs with the kids. But I cannot turn down the kids uh, any longer uh, after being asked last week. So uh, we're going to have Sunday school for the kids. So everybody let you know, let the kids know they can come to Sunday school uh, next week, uh, at 9 o'clock. We'll be downstairs and uh, we'll have a, a good time in the Lord. But again, the kids are, have spoken, as they say. The kids have spoken. Uh, they will have to be wearing masks and I might have to get some. Uh, so if somebody don't don't uh, have one, we have to wear a mask while we're down here. Okay. All right. So uh, you want to go ahead and pray us out? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time. We can just speak it and just help us to be more sensitive to your spirit, and to your will, and, be, and have that anticipation that you will guide us in the way we go and feed our souls and just give us a hunger for zeal to do your will and uh, keep the flesh uh, under and walk in, walk in the spirit and just uh, you can take up our cross 
daily problems. So help us to do that. Be obedient in every aspect that you ask. Help us to grow, Father. And don't be too big in a big hurry when we do things that you that you don't do things in a hurry. You learn that about you and help us to be patient. So we just thank you. And just use Pastor today and if you have any more exhortations, and just, and just uh, thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, what you're going to do. And thank you, uh, Brother Freddie did, and, and Brother, Brother Tony and Bria. Thank you for this Sunday school for the adults, and just, God, just bless the children that they might go out for them next week. And, and just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to go ahead and end today. Let me put it on. Yes, sir. Do you think that people who want to be Christians complicate the relationship with God's people? You say it one time. What I'm saying is, do you think people who come to Christ, however, or want to be Christian, complicate that? relationship that they are seeking with God. <clears throat> I mean, if, if, if they come in wholeheartedly, please, and and wanting to wanting to be of God, I think it will uncomplicate things if they come wholeheartedly. But they don't. But they don't. But they, right. don't. But they don't. And it's, you know, it's, it's their you know, it's, I'm not going to say, how can I say this? That's why they need people like us to be disciples, to disciple them, to help them get through all of that. Because they're not going to come wholeheartedly. She's going to kill over there. In my mind, if you will abide by the commandments and treat others as you want to be treated, then you shouldn't have any problems. Yeah, yeah, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Because your mind will not change every day according to circumstances. And people complicate the mind is wanting to change each and every situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do this for me, but don't do, do that, that for him. Yeah. Right. So, so, right. So that's that, what they're saying. But that's what happens, though. That's why I, I was. Yeah. I don't want to do this time because I get more enjoyment. This is what I want to do. Yeah. So, I'm gonna take a lag on this one. Right, right, and that's what happens. That's complication. It's, that's complication. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. If, if you have somebody there helping you and helping you guide through, you know, let's let's go to let's go to breakfast. You know, let's do something together so I can help you be on that straight straight and narrow road. Wow. So. Yeah, that, that, that's good too. But I, I believe people rely on somebody else helping them with their thing on the Right. When it should be self, you you try to save your soul. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you should put effort into doing that, right? And not allow you, you. Mm -hmm. Glenn, mm -hmm. Freddie, or anybody. All right. All right, guys. So we'll see you guys next week. Next week. <laughs>